Great. How much of the material on fecal error actions, statement termination, scope abortion, batch abortion, did you already know? Please vote for one. Most of this is new to me. I knew about half already. I knew most, but learned something new. I knew 100% of this already. Do, 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 do. <laughs> I'll give you another few seconds. Closing the poll. So it looks like um, there's a lot of new information for the group, which is great. 49% uh, said most of this was new to me. 22 said I knew about half already. 23, I knew most but learned something new. 6%, I knew 100% of this already. OK. Now, a few years ago, I wish I was one of those 6% because um, I ran a statement inside of an explicit transaction, and the first one aired out, and everything else committed. And I insisted it wasn't me. And uh, after an escalation, I learned a lot about SQL error handling. So my goal is you guys can all be a part of that 6% when you're planning on these SQL error messages, and you don't have to have uh, a bad work experience to bring that to life. So that's one of the goals of this particular webinar. Uh, let's move on. And what PowerPoint would be complete without a bulleted list, right? I'm not a big fan of bulleted lists, but here is something that I don't expect everybody to know all of this until about 30 minutes from now. Then all these bulleted lists should be like, oh, yeah, yeah, I got that. So this is what's coming, but let's make it come not in the form of a bulleted list, but actual examples. So we're going to pull up SQL Server, and we'll be working with SQL Server for the majority of this session. Now, dum-dum-dum, here's a little bit of a quiz. Most people get the first three right, and most people even get the fourth one correct. If I were to run this first query, very, very simple expression field that says select five, give that a whirl, the answer's five. Slightly harder question is what happens if you do select five plus one? The expression evaluates to six. What if I do five plus zero? It evaluates to five. How about five plus no? No. Now, usually over half the people or people shout in the back of the room when I'm giving, oh, that's going to be no, that's going to be no, because they've seen this trick before. Not everybody quite knows why. You know, when you're doing an expression or when people give you an answer, it wants to be 100% certain it's correct. Now, if I wanted to pool my money with Tara and I got $5, and I asked her how much she has, and she doesn't tell me how much she has, then I don't know the answer. The answer is no. And if I try to pull my money with David, but he doesn't tell me, the answer is still no. But David might have twice as much money as Tara. So when you have a no, you don't know the right answer for sure. And no is actually a fancy way of SQL saying, I don't know for sure. I, I can't be definitive. So. Be wary, and this is going to come up later, be wary of any expression that is processing or concatenating nulls. No matter how big everything on the other side of it is, your final answer is going to be null. All right, that was a little bit of prerequisite knowledge. Now, here's something that probably won't surprise you. In the JProco database, which is this fictitious database that I made myself, so I do not have to ask Microsoft if I can use VentureWorks, um, there's an employee table that has... 21 records. Now, if I misspell the table by using employee with three E's, then there is no such table. And this gives me a severity level 16 error message, which you can see highlighted right here. This is not an error message I created. I didn't, I didn't invent invalid object name employee. That was one that was supplied by the system, found an error that I made during compile time. I can raise an error without actually doing anything bad. This first one is going to raise a severity 16 error message with a message that Microsoft didn't put or ship in. This is called what happened. And as I run it, you can see this red ink, which means error, right? Your message is an error. And you can see that the level is 16. If I run it as a severity of 11, this just is red, it's just as errory, but you'll notice that it does tell us that the severity level is 11. 
you could say that's not as bad. Hmm. 11 to 16 really is in the same family of error messages. Now, this raise error of 10 is going to say what happened, but it's not going to say anything else. Look at that. No severity. doesn't say severity 10. Severity 10 is really an informational message. And you see a lot of severity 10s when you're doing day-to-day -day development activities. For example, most people have seen the message that says commands completed successfully. That was a severity 10 or lower message. And this is one that you see is shipped with Microsoft. So I just recreated that. An important thing to know is 11 or higher is an error. 10 or lower is not. 10 or lower is just a message. One easy way to tell when you're in the programming environment is, is it red? An error. Black, informational. So <clears throat> that kind of extends past our, or at least to our prerequisite knowledge. I wanted everybody to see an error message 11 or higher. And there's two types, the error messages that are built into SQL and the error messages that you can decide are on your own. But let's take it out of the abstract and into another example. Here, we have the database is keeping track of charity grants. And we can see grant number one from the 92% team is a $4,750 grant. Grant number two is the K-Land Fund Trust at $15,750. And then there's um, 11 other grants for a total of, of 11 grants. Now, what if the 92% foundation calls and says, hey, you guys do a good job of managing this. I want to add another $1,000 and bring it to $57.50. Well, we want to accept that. So we want the ability for us to do math against this and add grant amounts. But what if some sneaky person said, I've got an idea. I'm going to add a negative $1,000 to charity. That means you're taking money from charity, which should be frowned upon in society and disallowed in your uh, store procedure. So this is where a user-defined error message could come in handy because SQL should have the ability to subtract $1,000 if the business requirements warrant that. But if your business requirements wants you to create an error during a situation of normal everyday math, you can do it. So here what we've done is we said, you know what, if somebody's trying to take money from charity by passing in a parameter that's below zero, they're withdrawing money from charity. We need to create that as an error, and the error message will be grants must go up in value. It's not the only error that could happen out of passing this, out of running this stored procedure. If you look, for some reason, our parameters are being fed characters, like 003 could be interpreted as 3 as an integer. So if you pass 003 in and you cast it as an integer, it becomes 3. But what if somebody typed T-H-R-E-E? -E? In this case, you would get an error. Not a custom error, like grants must go up in value, but you'll get like a casting error that's built into Microsoft. So this sort of procedure is vulnerable to having a, a system-supplied error take place on it as well as a user-supplied error based on what we're going to pass in. So let's make sure that the stored procedure add grant amount is ready to be called on. And let's scroll down. This first statement should error out, not because SQL can't handle a subtraction of $50. That just violates our business requirements, and we want to stop that. In this case, we're going to stop it with an error. This will be the custom supplied error message that say grants must go up in value. This second one will work fine because it's going to convert a text 5-0 and try to figure out, well, what does that mean, 5-0? Or this, actually, you know, the 005 will be grant number 5 going up by 50 in value. So it's a perfect case scenario. This did not trigger a conversion error because 005 can cast into 5 very easily. And this did not trigger the custom supplied error message because the number is not below 0. This one will throw a conversion error because FIFTY cannot be converted into a 50. So we get a severity 16 error message. This one said error converting data type bar char to money. There's a comment. 
And by the way, these two scripts that have run so far and the five others that are coming, um, Tara and the folks at Embarcadero are going to make all these scripts available to you, as well as the reset scripts so you can have the JProCode database. Now, if you lose those, you can download them free at the Joe's Pro 